Well, hey guys and gals, it's me, George, the Shade Tree Fix It Man. And I'm here in my carport. And I also have the Zach. Tablet Man, Phone Man. I also have Mr. Mike. And I also have my granddaughter, Crystal. And my wife is in the background. Don't tell us she's on the video. <laughs> We're here to replace the radiator on a Saturn Ion. 2.2 liter engine and uh, I didn't make a video the first time around because I didn't know exactly how it was gonna go well as things work out we're gonna do this for the second time around because and this is a, a, a tip for those of you who have to replace the radiator in your Saturn Ion this particular Saturn has screw on, well, where did I go here? Let me come back here. This particular Saturn has thread in fittings for the transmission cooling lines that go into the radiator. And then this bolts onto the transmission down underneath. The radiator that we got did not have fittings for this, it only had fittings for quick connect and I gotta tell you right up front you cannot buy adapters to go from this fitting into the other fitting and the radiator bung is not the right one to screw in threaded but this radiator that we just bought is set up so that it will do either one the lines will thread in here and it also gives you adapters that come with it which we've already taken off for the quick connect and uh, I will put a link in the uh, description underneath to this radiator because I looked and I looked and I looked online and I couldn't find a radiator that would work with the threaded fittings on the transmission line and we went from part store to part store trying to find an adapter and uh, nobody had it and I went to the Chevrolet dealer they couldn't get me new lines they discontinued they don't make them anymore they don't make the radiators anymore so you have to get everything aftermarket so this radiator is the one you want and uh, where's the fittings that came out of here? We have them? Yeah, they're right. This is the fitting that comes that will also adapt it for quick connect. And see there's the quick connect set up there with those little clips in it. Well, the other radiator only had this and the, the threads on the bottom were smaller and not adaptable to the threaded line. So that's the quick tip. Now we're going to take you through the process step by step of how to remove the radiator. And the first thing you're going to note is that we have the car jacked up in the air. And that's because the radiator comes out the bottom. It will not come out the top unless you're going to take the motor out. So it comes out the bottom and it's a fairly straightforward setup. Now let me show you here, uh, one of the things you're going to want to do, just so you have room to get down in there, is take this off and take this off. And it's a matter of this clip here, and unscrewing these two clamps here, that'll come off and this just lifts up off of there. That gives you some room to work down in there, because the next thing that you have to do the next thing you're going to want to do is to take the electric fan off. Sorry for the shaky cam. Old man shaky hands. There are only two bolts that hold on the electric fan. The top one, just top bracket just clips in here on the radiator and then there's one bolt on either side at the bottom. 
So that's quite simple. And you're not going to remove it entirely. You're just going to lift it up and out of the way so that you have room once you get going on the radiator itself. Then you're going to want to disconnect this radiator hose right here. This is what we would call the top hose. It's on the driver's side of the car and it goes up here and into the thermostat housing there. And you want to have a bucket to catch your fluids. You come over to this side, can you see down in there? This, we're going to have to disconnect this top radiator hose right here. And it's the same on this side for the electric fan. It has a clip in the top and a bolt in the bottom. So let me uh, undo this if I have the right screwdriver. I will unscrew this clamp. And just slide the hose right off, just like that. Okay? And we'll just uh, move it up and out of the way. All right, now let's go back to the other side. Now the other thing you're going to do is you can see my fittings here. Your cooling lines from your transmission screw in here and also down at the very bottom. And uh, the transmission lines are already off because we were trying to get them adapted or replaced or whatever and they didn't. But we're we're ready to go now, so we're gonna unscrew this hose. He's coming. Now we're down underneath. There's Mike. Say hi, Mike. Hey, how you doing? Good. <laughs> we also have the air conditioning um, condenser that is attached to the front of the radiator. So we want to make sure that we disconnect it from the radiator, and it has one bolt right here. And it has another bolt in a similar place on the other side. And then up in there, get my camera to slide up in there. There's another bolt up there that we have to release. Okay? So that the uh, condenser will come off. Now, I said previously that there was a bolt up at the top, but there is not. It's just a tab up there that the uh, condenser slides up into. So the only thing that holds the condenser in place, other than fitting into those tabs, is the bolt on each side at the bottom. So let's get the other side out and we'll move the condenser out of our way. We're not removing it from the, the car, we're just moving it out of the way so we have clearance to get the radiator, which is right next to it here. Get the radiator out. Now I have my clip slid out up there now and Mike is gonna pull down on his side. There it is. Yeah, got it. There it is. Okay, so we're just gonna let that kind of hang there. How far down is it gonna hang? So your condenser is gonna end up hanging down like that. Now, right here, we have three bolts on each side that hold this tab in place that holds the bottom of the radiator. The radiator it just has a stub that goes down into this rubber mount. So we're going to take these three bolts out on each side and then our radiator will be ready to be removed. Hold on to your hats because here we go! Woo. Okay. Mike's taking out the bolts on the bracket. There's okay. two on the other side. All right, now, Miss Crystal, if you go upside, up the top side, and just hold on to the radiator so it don't drop on us. Yep. Radiator. 
Okay. You got it? I think I got it, yeah. Okay. Middle one? Go for the middle one. There's three of them. Mike's doing the third one now on his side. Okay, and he's going to slide the bracket right out. You watch him as he pulls it. He's going to pull it down off of the stub on the bottom of the radiator. Right there where the rubber is. Just pull that down. Yep, just like that. Yeah, I got it. Don't worry. Okay. All right. And then I've got to do my side. Here we come. Nice and easy. Nice and easy out the, the ball. The old radiator. Well, the old new radiator. Don't be concerned about all the antifreeze that flows down your shirt into your back pocket. Oh, Andrew, no. grab the radiator, please. Andrew, grab the radiator. Take it. Take it. Thanks, sir. Where do you want me to put it? <laughs> back pocket. Don't no, fit in your back pocket, Whoa. I thought it was coming down on my head. I got it. It's a little bit. Hold them both now. It's gonna come down on your side a little bit, I think. Let me get my side up. There we go. Okay. Uh, I think. So here's the picture of the three bolts that hold the bracket in place and the spud on the bottom of your radiator comes down inside of this mount hole here. Now chances are that you're going to break the rivets that hold this, uh, this air dam in place. So a simple way of replacing them is using a wire tie and so we did that on both sides and this hole over here I can't get it lined up because it interferes with the uh, cooling line from the condenser and uh, it should have been it was n never had a, a rivet in it when we started the job so we've wire tied it up and we did the same over here where Mike put a wire tie right there and he put another wire tie right there and so this is all set to go so we're all done underneath Woo! let's go back up top and see what we got oh I didn't show you we have our cooling lines hooked back up now you shouldn't have to replace or remove your cooling lines uh, but we did because we were trying to find adapters but if you do I'm going to warn you, the nut that holds that cooling line cluster together, it was rusted on there big time. We ended up having to take it off with a hammer and chisel. Oh, yeah. So we found we were able to get the nut off without hurting the stud. We found an appropriate nut, and because it was not a locking nut, we put Loctite Red on it. So that should take care of holding that all in place. Let's go back up top. All we got left to do now is uh, we will set our electric fan back in place, hook up our radiator hoses, hook up our cooling lines, and then start refilling our fluid levels. Hold on to your hats because here we go. Okay. So you can see now how this all looks with the uh, air induction removed and now we're going to hook up our radiator hose again just slide it right down in there it's hard to do with one hand while you're using the shaky cam in the other hand so I'll bring you back we're going to hook up the two radiator hoses we have to uh, reattach our electric fan and then we'll hook up our transmission lines. Transmission lines. Now you want to make sure when you're hooking your uh, electric fan shroud back in place that it gets 
clip down in here. There's no bolts or anything. It just uh, pushes down in. And the same thing down the bottom. If I can get my light to turn where I want it to be. Same thing down here at the bottom. Um, it has a clip there that pushes down into a, a catch. So those are snapped in place and it won't move anywhere now. I'm going to hook up our radiator hose and I think before we do our radiator hose we're going to do our transmission line which is right down there ready to be put into the hole. These have rubber washers on the inside of the flange that do the sealing. we come hopefully this is the proof of the pudding changing our radiator good thumbs up Runs great. okay great now we're almost ready to go for some lunch we just yeah. gotta wash our hands yeah, get some lunch. until next time guys and gals this is George the shade tree fix it man and crystal and Mr. Mike, Mr. Mike and Mr. Andrew <laughs> with the haircut. And it's me. Bye for now. Oh!